Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here, and in this Photoshop tutorial, we're going to create a very special texture, which by itself does not look very interesting, but when applied to your photos and artwork, really instantly creates the foundation for this engraved dollar bill style treatment. Let's jump into Photoshop and get started. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get started here actually by creating a very, very small document, just 10 pixels high by 10 pixels wide. And I'm gonna set the color mode on this to grayscale. 8-bit is fine, and I want the background color to be white. All right, so let me hit Command or Control-0 to zoom all the way into this, and there are just a couple quick things I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna hit M for the Marquee tool, and I'm gonna drag a selection around the top half of this image. This tool kind of snaps to each pixel, so it's pretty easy to get that selection to be exactly five pixels high. Then I'm gonna use Command or Control-I to invert that area from black to white. I'll hit Command or Control-D to deselect, and next, under Filter, Blur, I'm gonna use Box Blur, and set the value here to four pixels. And finally, I'm gonna to go to the Edit menu and select Define Pattern. And I don't even really need to name it, I'll just hit OK. Next, I'm gonna create a new document, and this time this one's gonna be pretty large, 6,000 by 6,000 pixels. This can also be grayscale, and that does help to keep the file size from being too large. And here, I'm gonna use Edit Fill, and I'm gonna set the contents to Pattern. Then in the options here, I can select this little pattern we just created and hit OK. Then I'm gonna use Filter, Distort, Wave, and I'm gonna punch in some specific settings. I'm gonna set the wave type to sine, the number of generators to one, the wavelength to 149 and 150, the amplitude to 49 and 50, and finally the scale to 49 and 50. I'm gonna hit OK, and you should end up with this kind of tiny, wavy, headache-inducing pattern so far. I'm gonna use Command or Control A to select all, then Command or Control C to copy that to the clipboard. Then in the Fill and Adjustment Layers menu, I'm gonna create a new solid color layer, and in the pop-up, I'm gonna make this 50% gray. Then I need to option click or alt click on the mask of this layer. I wanna be in mask view mode, so it's not just a click, but making sure it's an option or alt click, and then I'm looking at the white of this mask. Once I'm here, I'm gonna hit Command or Control V to paste in that wavy texture. Then I'll use Command or Control T to transform, I'll right click and select rotate 90 degrees clockwise. All right, let me click out of mask view mode and I'm gonna bring this layer's opacity to 90%. Then I'm gonna use Command or Control E to merge these two layers into a single layer and I'll apply one filter here. In the distort section, I'm gonna use ripple and I'll set the amount to 15% and the size to large. All right, that's it, that is the magic texture. I'm gonna select all and copy that and let's drop this over an image. So here, I've already clipped out this guy and put him over kind of a faint gradient. I'm gonna trust most of you guys have a preferred method for clipping things out of a background, so my apologies for not including that. I do need this to be a black and white image, so let me just select this layer and use Command-Shift-U or Control-Shift-U to desaturate that. Then I'll paste in the crazy texture over the top. I'm gonna to rename this Engrave and the key is to set the blending mode of this layer to hard mix. All right, so you can see how that's starting to work. Realistically, getting the line work in here is actually only half the battle to getting a convincing finished look. No matter what those fine details are, a photograph without any treatment to make it look more illustrated is just always gonna read as a photograph. The nice thing here is that we can keep this engraved layer active on top and work on this image to really bring out the best in this treatment, and it doesn't take much. So what I like to do is kind of smooth the whole thing out using the filter in the stylized section, the oil paint filter, and I'm just gonna max this thing out with all the values at 10, but with the lighting feature turned off. Then I'm gonna use image adjustments, shadows, highlights, and I can kind of flatten out the image here by cranking the shadows up. I'm gonna go all the way up to 90% or so, and maybe bringing the highlights up a bit too, maybe to about the halfway point. All right, I'm also gonna use Command or Control J to make a copy of this layer, and on the copy, I'm gonna reapply that oil paint filter. I can use Command Option F or Control Alt F to reapply the latest filter, and just go maybe eight or 10 times on that same filter, really mushing it together. I'm not really worrying about the details that are getting lost here, because now I've got a detailed one on the bottom and the super smooth one on top, and what I can do is select the mask on this top layer, I'll hit B for the brush tool and right click and bring the hardness to zero. 
and then just paint some black into this mask to hide the weird areas and reveal the details where I want them. So definitely in the eyes, and then just anywhere where it looks like it wants a bit more detail. All right, well, that's looking more like an illustration. And remember, I just pasted this engraved texture in. I haven't moved it or anything. So I can use Command or Control T to transform, and I could scale this down to get more detail in this line work. Although I think the scale is looking pretty good here. What I do like to do is rotate this texture a bit and see if I can match some of the curves in the illustration. So I found that if there's a more shadowy side of the face, it looks good if I can kind of match the curves in this texture to the curve under the eye here and sort of over the cheekbone, something like that. Then I can even refine the lighting here a little further if I create a levels adjustment layer and put this under the engraved texture. And if I push these values around, look how beautifully that treatment reacts. You almost get the line work kind of changing in real time. I like to dial in the overall contrast of the image and then bring up the black output level so that engraved treatment shows up even in the solid black areas. And if you're feeling like the values here are a little too crunchy and you're getting kind of these aliased looking pixels, you can select the engrave layer and rather than bringing down the opacity, which doesn't really help, you can bring down the fill value. And at around 85 or 90% here, you really get this nice natural softness on the edges of the lines, but maintain that black and white quality. All right, let's give this a little bit of color. A lot of ways to introduce color here. My favorite is of course the gradient map adjustment layer. And here I can make the blacks go more toward green and I'll change the whites to more of a weathered cream color. And of course you could dial this in however you want. Some vintage looking browns can look cool or you can even go psychedelic with it. All right, finally, let's get a little weathered texture on top. This is a free texture from texturelabs.org. Everything on texturelabs.org is free, as a matter of fact. I'm gonna copy this and paste it on top, maybe set it to screen mode. All right, well, that is the setup. It's definitely cool to experiment with more graphic elements in here too. So in this version, I put a little bit of an outer glow on this guy and I put some sun rays in the background. If you wanna make these sun rays, I'll include a very simple three-step way to do it in the description below. All right, well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and that it will help you to create something. If so, please do hit that like button. That just helps the channel out, so thank you for that. Always more content on the way, so be sure to subscribe. Thank you to the texturelabs.org Patreon supporters, and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.